repairing some parts for a model steam lorry. As the location of the model steam lorry was a long distance from my workshop, I suggested to the customer that only the damaged parts were sent to me for repair, along with some photographs for reference. The first thing I did was to print out one of the photographs that gave me a very clear impression of the job I was about to do. Here are a set of plastic bags that contain the broken parts. On the bench you can see what they are. One of them is a water valve that isn't broken. And the Jubilee Fittings live steam injector isn't broken either. Here are some of the photographs from the original installation. Everything seems to go a little bit wrong after the crankshaft driven pump. By studying these photographs as well as the one that I printed out it gives me a good idea where the parts actually fitted on the engine. This was the photograph that I printed out and I think it should work out okay to be used as a pattern. In this clip I'm laying the parts one by one over the photograph. The small square block is the water bypass valve. This part doesn't appear to be broken but I am going to relap the handle. With all the parts laid out on the photograph I can begin the job. I think when the owner removed these parts he did it in the wrong order and managed to snap off this one entirely. What I need to do is remove the bit that's stuck in the fitting, using this very old but very good set of Dormer screw extractors. Before I start the job properly though, I'm going to drop the injector into an aerosol cap filled with acid from my acid bath. In this clip you can see how the screw extractors work, but in this case, and I think it's the first time ever, this did not work at all. I may be wrong, but I think this fitting's been put together with Loctite 603 or 601. I couldn't carry on using the screw extractor, I would have destroyed the part. The secret is a bit of heat. I'm using my very useful small Proxon blowtorch to heat up the part, which destroys the bond of the Loctite and makes it very easy to unscrew the broken bit. And talking of broken bits, here's the other end of the part that snapped off in the fitting. This fitting has a blanked off inlet or outlet. It's just a quarter by 40 threads per inch union nut which holds a stainless steel ball in the end of the fitting where the coned union from the pipe would normally fit. Before continuing, I'm going to use a wire brush to remove all traces of sealant and general crud from the fitting. As usual, health and safety wear eye protection when using these things. This is a tin of tea cut normally used for cleaning paintwork on cars. I'm going to use it to lap the tapered part of the handle into the tapered hole. I may as well do this as a matter of course because I don't want it to leak. Once I'd used the tea cut and got a good finish, I blasted all the residue away with some 3 in 1 oil spray. Then I connected an airline and put 30 pounds per square inch into the fitting, and as you can see, there are no bubbles appearing from around the tap. This special valve has two purposes, the first one being as a water bypass valve from the axle driven pump and the second one is it allows you to drain the water out of the tank. It's time to look now at the other fitting, the one that's damaged. The broken part is only quarter by 40 threads per inch. The hole in the middle is far too big and it's very weak, that's probably why it broke. I cleaned off the mess of the broken fitting with my linisher and now it's in the drilling machine. Here I'm drilling it, 7 30 seconds of an inch which is tapping size for quarter by 40. Followed by using a quarter by 40 tap to thread the hole. I am of course doing this by hand. Over now to my trusty Boxford lathe with a piece of quarter inch brass in the chuck. First of all I face across the front, then I drill it with a centre drill, but I drill deeper than normal so I have a cone recess in the end. Then I drilled a long hole in the piece of brass for the same distance that it's sticking out of the chuck using a 1 8 twist drill. A diameter of 1 8 of an inch is perfect for this job. Next I engaged back gear and threaded the piece of brass using a tailstock die holder, quarter by 40 threads per inch. This part of the clip is running at double speed as I withdrew the die holder from the now threaded piece of quarter inch diameter brass. Then I parted it off using a parting tool. For some inexplicable reason I parted it off a bit too short, so I started the whole job again and made a longer piece. I hadn't allowed for the length of thread that screws into the block. To screw the piece of threaded brass into the hole I used the union nut that I removed from this part which held the stainless steel ball on the seat. 
And believe it or not, the union nut was cracked, so some of this put a lot of pressure on this at some time. Into the outer part of the workshop on the brazing hearth, and here I'm silver soldering as usual, totally wrong. I always do it this way to show the principle. If you don't have enough heat, this is what happens. You get just a blob that sits on the work. When the heat gets the right amount and the flux is correct, look what happens. It flows around the joint. Once the part had cooled to black, I dunked it in some water to remove the initial scale that was created by the process. And once again, used the wire brush in the Proxon motor tool to clean up the part. Then I tried a test fit to make sure everything was okay. And it was, so I fitted this part in place using some Loctite 542. Now it's time to look at the water valve. And seeing the split pin still intact, I think that's the reason why the fitting was broken. It should be possible to fit the water valve and the part that goes into the tank as one unit and then fit the handle later and refit the split pin. Apart from not being broken, my repair is much squarer than this one was. And it's stronger and not bent. Sparing no expense, I'm refitting a quarter by 40 union nut with a stainless steel ball over the redundant inlet or outlet. Here I'm holding the repaired part against the photograph, and I think it should be fine. I decided to repair the existing parts rather than remanufacture, basically to keep the cost down. The threads on the fittings that go into the tank bushes are 1 8 BSP. There was nothing much wrong with these threads, so I just kept them as they were. It's probably a good idea though to fit them into the tank using some PTFE tape. There was evidence of sealant and PTFE tape on these threads. When I mail back all these parts to the customer, I'm going to also supply some shim washers, so I should be able to get the fittings in a perfect position, without shearing them off. Over now to this pipe. Look at the state of this, it's really mangled. I'm just going to make a complete new pipe assembly, with a coned union on one end, and a flat-ended union for the injector on the other. Here are the collection of parts ready to be silver soldered. So once again it's into the outer part of the workshop on the brazing hearth to silver solder these parts. This time I'm going to get the parts to the right temperature before touching them with the silver solder. Here we go. And as you can see the silver solder flashes around the joint and at the other end too. The procedure is to let the parts cool to black and then drop them in water followed by the acid bath, but I didn't use the acid bath on these small parts. To save time, I moved directly to the polishing spindle. Here's an AB comparison, and this is pretty close, almost as close as I'm going to get it anyway. I removed the injector from the acid and dropped it in some water. Then after a while I shook it around, took it out of the water, and removed the cones. The injector is now much cleaner on the inside and out. I put the cones in a safe place on the bench and cleaned up the injector using the wire brush. And here it is, looking a lot better than the photograph, but without any cones in the end. This is very important, the injector cones only fit one way in the injector, as they are both different sizes. Union nuts must be fitted to prevent losing the cones. When refitting the injector to the piping, remove and discard the temporary ones, do not lose the injector cones. And here is the injector fitted with two temporary union nuts to hold the cones in position, and now it's also attached to the new piece of pipe. There is another piece of pipe that goes from the tank fitting that has the tap on it, and this connects to a red T piece that does two things. One end of it goes to the check valve on the boiler, and the other end goes to the crankshaft driven pump. I'm going to discard this pipe and make something entirely different. So I drew along the pipe just to make sure I don't lose the angle of the original. The outlet thread on this fitting is BSP. I need to make a new piece of pipe and I wanted to use commercial union cones like this. I drilled the hole in the union nut 5.6mm which is clear in size for a 3 16 union cone but I need a 5.32nd union cone adapter. You can buy these from Blackgates Engineering and they are very useful things to have in all sizes. What I'm about to do is fit another T-piece into the circuit, just like you see here. I've extended the length of the pipe from the fitting to the T-piece. 
and according to the photograph, the length of the pipe should be OK. The final job is to make a cap to go over the other end of the T-piece. So why am I putting this T-piece in place? It's to allow the owner to fill the boiler using an electric pump. Provided that the water bypass valve on the tank is closed, after removing this blanking cap that I'm just making, all you do is connect your water supply to the T-piece and pump water into the boiler. Here's a blanking cap and I've put an O-ring inside to make sure it seals. And here's the blanking cap screwed to the T-piece. I'm going to conclude this video with a before and after shot. This is before, and now this is after. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.